Hi, this is Sheldon here from the Currency Advisory Desk with today's report. Well, the most anticipated domestic market event, the RBI credit policy, turned out to be a non-mover for the markets yesterday. As predicted in our last report, the RBI did not budge at all with the current interest rate regime. Even though this was supposed to be a positive for the Indian rupee, it closed weaker at 57.87 yesterday. Now, the increase in trade deficit data for the month of May to $20.414 billion can be attributed to this uh, yesterday's week close. Now, we expect the Indian rupee to continue exhibiting weakness against the US dollar in line with most of its Asian peers. Now, traders can go long if the pair breaks the 58 level in the spot. However, we will be facing an increase in volatility due to the two-day FOMC meet scheduled to begin today. So traders should avoid carrying a large amount of overnight positions. Now, Even a hint at a change in Fed's dovish monetary policy stance will send global markets in a downward spiral, especially the emerging markets. Now, the world is slowly but surely awakening to the fact that the addiction of easy money created by central banks is a difficult habit to get over. Now, the euro has been trading in a sideways manner against the US dollar for the past two days. Now, traders are in a wait and watch mode before the crucial FOMC meet. Looking at the way things are shaping up, we do not see the Fed making any changes in their monetary policy. However, there should be some statements indicating that they will pull back in the near future. Now, the euro dollar will trade as per the news flow from this meet. Now, we expect the euro to give up some gains and move lower to around 1.32 levels against the US dollar. Now we had the April 2013 trade balance figures for the Eurozone, which came in at 14.9 billion euros compared to a 22.5 billion figure for the month of March 2013. Now the key takeaway from this data is the increase in imports by 0.5%, which is a healthy sign for the Eurozone economy, as this indicates an increase in domestic demand, a key to the revival in growth there. Now, domestically, traders can go long in the euro rupee pair at 77.50. Now, we had the ECB president, Mr. Mario Draghi, who will be speaking later today. We can expect some volatility in the euro dollar pair due to his statements. Now, as per our previous report, the pound dollar pair hit a high of 1.5752 yesterday before retreating. In rupee terms also, the pound is holding above the 91 level against the Indian rupee. Now, we have a slew of fundamental data from the United Kingdom today. The CPI figure will be the prime figure to look out for. In fact, the European Zoo economic sentiment will also cause some movement in the pound dollar pair. Now, we expect some pullback in this pair at this level. Domestically, traders can go long in the pound rupee pair if it breaks the 91 level in the spot market. Now, the US dollar index has rebounded from 80.70 levels twice and is not showing any indication of weakness below this level. The dollar has also strengthened against the yen in the last two trading days. Now we have the core CPI and housing starts data from the United States today, which will give an indication of what the Fed intends to do with the monetary easing program. Now traders can go long in the yen rupee pair at around 61.10 levels. Now it's surprising how participants react to swings in the currency market. We had all sorts of rumors and tips coming out in the dollar rupee that you know the pair will now move to 55 and eventually break the 50 level in the past two or three trading days. Now we strongly advise traders not to fall prey to such antics. It's mere common sense that there aren't any fundamental reasons for the rupee to strengthen against the US dollar. We agree that our inflation numbers have come down, but are also alarmed by the amount of re uh, revisions that proceed every number coming out from the center. Because whenever there's an inflation figure or you know any uh, number that comes out, the previous figure is always revised, and this is happening at a very alarming rate. Right now, what India needs is inflows, period. In the current economic scenario, what's actually happening is just the opposite. We're seeing a lot of outflows. Besides, even if we look at other BRIC, uh, other countries in the BRIC economic system, the story is the same. So why should India be different? We are in for some very volatile times and hence advise our traders to maintain discipline with all their trades and not to lose focus. 
Well, that's it from the Currency Advisory Desk. Thank you.